Hey, what's going on? In this video, we're going to be talking about date pickers and time pickers. But before we begin, while you're already here, might as well subscribe. I'm going to be putting out more stuff um, every week, not on a real schedule because I will work full time. But you might as well subscribe because there'll be more material UI, JavaScript, Python, all that good stuff to come. But also, before you actually begin, I'm going to post three of these commands online to run in your terminal because with date pickers, time pickers, there's some extra dependencies that you need to allot for. And this is actually the second time for me doing this video because it wasn't as straightforward in the material UI documentation. But let's go ahead and begin here. So we have our app.js um, file here that I've already gutted out. So let's go ahead and pour what we need in here according to the documentation for material UI. So we have that there, that's good. We're going to need a grid, and not for anything super important, but I think it may be nice to kind of just organize our different pickers as we put them on in there. So the last thing you want to do is have one of those situations where, you know, you're coding, I'm coding, you're following along, and then you hit this, well, wait, what, what's doing what on the page, or why is this all jumbled up? And that's no fun either. I've watched enough tutorials in my life that... Well, one, I you know, want to make them, which I am now, but also uh, I kind of want to make the ones that I wish I got to see. So we're just doing our typical imports here. Keyboard time picker. And this is the last one, unless there was some kind of weird typo. So okay, and we just got to pull that in from this. Okay, awesome. So one thing you need to know about pickers that you know you, you sent you we're going to click on them to see they're going to create a clock that we could adjust to set the time or something like a calendar that's going to appear on the screen, and you need to know that they're controlled. And whenever you see something be controlled or reference uh, being controlled, that just means someone is using use state or something or other to save what the um, current and the updated selection is going to be from the user. In and of itself, these pickers will not be able to, to just take the, the new information and update everything for you. They need to be controlled, which means they just need to be hooked up to something to save what you're doing. So with that, really this is not you know too different from the documentation here. So let's come in and let's make our thing that's going to control the state here. And so we're going to use state, well, quite literally, and we're just going to not rewrite the book. But just follow the documentation here and the examples that they provide. So we're going to make a new date object and we're going to make this 2020, 9 11, and for the time, let's just do noon right there. All right, that is awesome. It's got to be uppercase. And it's complaining right here because I haven't used these yet, and that's fine. No harm, no foul there. And because it's good practice, let's make a handle date change. That's going to take in the date object. That's going to be sent up through an on change function, which we'll see. Now, some of this is just me talking, but. I'll explain it all as we go along so there's no you know, mishaps or lack of understanding. So I already have the um, server running down here, the npm start to get this going. There's nothing in here yet so that's no big deal. Move that over and let's come in and let's get to work. So we're going to have a material uh, or MUI uh, pickers utils provider and this is essentially the parent wrapper that's going to go around your keyboard or your um, date picker or your keyboard date picker or your time picker I should say. And so this is just going to take utils
date functions utils, at least that's for what I think it stands for there. Let me tighten this up right here. And then let's make our grid. Let me make a uh, container. And then let's just make this, and let's not do it with the column. I did it with the column. I recorded one where I did it with the column, but I think I'm gonna do this one without because I think it'll make some um, important distinctions. And you'll see what I mean in just a moment. All right, so now that we have this set up, awesome. Let's come in here and let's do our keyboard date picker. And that's essentially it. Um, there's no, there's no, you know, text, you know, that comes after this. There's no set some time. It's just kind of this inline element that just hangs out right there, but it takes a lot of attributes. So let's come in here and we'll do disable toolbar, and you'll see what that means in just a moment. Variant. In line, we're going to cover that too. Format, and if you screw this up at all uh, on the format, just make sure it's the capital uh, month right there. That can be something easy to look over. And the ID. Let's call this a date picker because in the documentation it, it differentiates between two, but I'll show you what changes you can make to switch between either one. Plus, I don't want a ton of code in here to confuse anyone. Label will say uh, date picker, and this is actually visually what's going to show up on the page, which is pretty cool. And then our value is going to be the selected date. So this which is this date object, and notice it's just a date. So this 9-11-2020 should appear already inside of the keyboard date picker. So on change, what happens is, is when we select from the calendar you're gonna see appear, it's gonna kick off this function here, and it's gonna take in the date and then what it's going to do is take that information, which is already bundled and formatted for you, which is nice, and it's going to set this in our state. So it goes from here to here, back up to selected date, and then it resets it down here, which is cool. And then kind of the last thing on here is our, our keyboard button props. These are important because usability. Change date. Looks like I have a typo here. Oh, let's see why. That's weird. Oh, that's because I uh, made that mistake up there. Cool. So now that we have this, let's let's click it, right? So it starts with 9-11, so we could see clearly that this T is for the time afterwards, so this kind of splits it. If we wanted to go to 9-10, we see that it's updating thusly, which is really cool. And we just click off, and then we have our new time there. But if we wanted to disable toolbar or remove that, what would that look like? So let's look at this. It looks good, it looks okay. I mean, that's a lot of work you don't have to do. Let's come in here and we'll save it. It refreshes, right? But hey, so it's really talking about this toolbar is kind of this guy up here, where we're able to come through and kind of, you know, if we want to be in 2060, um, this doesn't do much here but it kind of gives you this header at the top. And so I'm gonna keep it because I like it. I kind of like that aspect of it. Maybe your users or maybe your business partners or whoever don't wanna give that kind of access. You just kind of wanna have it go month to month, 
select the dates, that's fine. You don't need anything from 2060 being entered. The next thing is, is this is in line. So as we see from this line on 28 right here, this just appears, bam, right inside of our um, you know, file here or our, our page. But if we were to do dialogue, this would happen. We can see that it, it, be, it takes on the dialogue styling here. And so if we were to look into inspect, and I'm getting some error here on the side, but never mind that. Let me try to bring this on in here. We see that it um, it generates some like script and injects it into here as it uh, moves on in to produce that dialogue for us. So behind the scenes, it's changing, just changing the way it displays to us, which is kind of nice here. And so that's pretty much the keyboard date picker. So let's come down here and let's do the um, next thing, which is a time picker. So keyboard time picker and just an FYI um, I know I didn't do it here because there's just like two but it's 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 pretty good practice at least I suggest it that if you go beyond two you know types of attributes in here you should just hit enter and just tab them on over like this it, it, you'll have a more column looking code but trust me it's way easier than scrolling horizontally that's my uh, free tip to you. Okay, margin is normal. Once again, this doesn't differ too much from the actual documentation if you go to look at it yourself. You got a time picker. And let's just copy and paste this here. So if we come down here and save, we now have this time picker, and it looks nearly identical, which you know is pretty nice there. Um, it would be, I think, cool if they just had a clock rather than a calendar here, but you know maybe future editions will have that. You click on this, and you can see now you could select the the minutes. If you come over here, you would come in and select the time, but it already knows you just selected the time, so it jumps over to the minutes for you, which I think is pretty neat. So you come in here, you click OK, and that is kind of weird um, for me is that you click OK on that, but if we were to, you know, for the, the calendar over here, uh, never mind. But essentially, that is the date picker and the time picker for Material UI. Once again, if you didn't catch the um, imports that you had to do at the beginning of the video, um, I leave them in the description below. Feel free to, and I suggest, like, sharing, subscribing, commenting all over this bad boy. I uh, put a lot of work into this stuff to make them better every time. And uh, have a good one.